Hello YouTube, uh, hello and welcome back to Queen Marcus Plains, you know, this is what y'all been waiting for. Thank y'all so much for, so much love for the first episode, you know what I'm saying? For showing so much love, I decided to bring out a second episode. Before I begin, I thank y'all for giving me to 100 subscribers. I finally made it, you guys, you know, it means the world to me. I appreciate every, all the love and support you guys have given to all my videos. Once again, thank y'all for helping me so much to reach this milestone. We're growing slowly, slowly but surely. I can tell you that for sure. Our next goal is to reach 125 subscribers. Can we do it, guys? Can you guys do it? And I know the squad is strong enough. Since y'all got the first episode to 26 likes, I want y'all to give this episode 30 likes. So make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe if you uh, if you're new around this, and join the community community that we built on this channel. And hit that notification bell to be up to date with all my videos. Comment below any content you want to see me to do below, and I can, I can see if I can make that happen. Tomorrow I'll be doing this a 100 sub celebration for each and every one of y'all that has supported me for this channel. So stay tuned for that. Now let's get back to the video. Like I said before this episode, I'm bringing a little bit of my creativity into the mix. My brain, of course, and that's you right like here. Bringing y'all a story based on my creative mind as well as what inspired me to, to do the story as well as how long the creative process took me to write it and much more. The story is not based on true events though, mm -hmm. so don't think it's like real facts. It's just straight from, from here to here. Let's make this popular as the first episode. This story will be called Eagle Clove Cabin. In this story, it all started in, a, in the rural, rural country city of New Hampshire. Tamara and her friend Julie were getting ready for their trip to go to camp up north for the month. They had gathered some supplies they needed as well as some clothes and various accessible necessities they had to bring since that review only had one shower. After gather, gathering everything they needed and, and before hitting the road, Julie had decided to make breakfast for them both. Shortly after they ate, they headed out to the car and headed on the road. On the way there, they had to say goodbye to a few friends and family members before continuing on the road for the camp. After a five and a half hour, hours and a half drive of driving, they had finally arrived. When they had gotten out of the car, Julie immediately looked spooked and said, This place looks haunted as heck. Oh my gosh. Tamara giggles and says, It looks like a bit rusty, a bit old and rusty, but nothing like cleaning up the place to make it brand new again. Julie, come on, lighten up a little bit. We'll be fine. We could consider this a second home to always come back to in case we need to get away from a normal, normal life back home. Enough yammering. We have to gather our beds and start hanging in. It's getting close to sundown, and I'm for one am starving and want to cook something for us to eat tonight. Come on, come and help me bring our luggage inside, Julie, would you? Despite shivering and fear, Julie gathered her belongings from the trunk of the car and went inside with Chandra. Julie, look at this place. This place ain't too bad looking. However, this cabin needs some love and clean up. Looking at the fact that a few clean supplies to get started. Tamara takes out some bleach, sponges, gloves, and some soap. Let's get this cleaned up. Clean up. Then we eat dinner. Don't be scared. I'm going to be right here with you. We're in this together. Are you with me? She asks. Despite running, uh, fear running through her soul, Julie says, we got this. As you can see the look on Julie's face, she wants to say no, but maintain her ground because she didn't want to ruin her best friend time in this cabin that Tim really worked her butt off of, of getting some money gathered for it. An hour into cleaning, Julie hollered, Tamara, Tamara, come here, please. She tries not to cry. Tamara quickly runs into a room where Julie stood there, legs shaking in fear. Tamara says, Julie, what's wrong? I heard you hollering from all the way in the hallway from the back area. Julie says, I think I heard a noise from outside the window over there. Let me check it out, Tamara says. Don't, don't go over there, Ju uh, Julie. It's fine. Nothing's going to happen. As she approaches the window and opens it, see, nobody there. Just trees 
rustling against the window because of window blowing. There's nothing to worry about. Now come on, take a break. You look a little exhausted. Let's go to the kitchen and prepare some dinner. What do you say, Tamara asks. Sounds like a plan, Julie says nervously. Since, oh, so Julie and, uh, Julie and Tamara head to the kitchen, pull out some ingredients from the grocery bags. After pulling out the stuff in the bags, they began cooking. After 45 minutes of preparation and cooking, they had finished cooking the meal. They, they had made some chicken and, with rice and vegetables and some chocolate chip cookies for dessert. We made some good food and no stress in the world to think about. Ain't that right, Julie? She asked. Yeah, I'm going to try to forget what will happen earlier and ease my mind. After having dinner and eating some of the cookies, Tamara and Julie decided to wipe, relax and watch some TV. Julie? What do you feel like watching on TV? A horror? She asked. Um, not horror. Try not to be scared when especially it's going to be midnight in three hours. Maybe some calm interaction, I suggest. Something less crazy, she says. Tamara giggles. Come on, Julie. You can't be spooked about something that wasn't there earlier. Thoughts running through your head are trying to mess with you. I'll pop some popcorn and we'll get this relaxing night started. Do you want anything to drink from the kitchen while I'm in there, Julie? Uh, she asks. Um, another cola from the fridge and a bag of chips. She says. Alright, I'll be there in five minutes. Five minutes pass by and Tamara finally comes back. Julie, I told you I'll be back with the snacks. Why do you look so terrified? She asks. Who? Me? Terrified? Nah. I'm fine, Tamara. Let's just enjoy the movie. I don't want to ruin this night because of my antics, but I just recommend we watch a comedy, comedy please. All right, Julie, you got it. A comedy it is. So the girl watches the movie, and a few hours later, they fell asleep on the couch. There was a uh, sound of sleep until there was a noise. Hello YouTube, uh, hello and welcome back to Queen Marcus Plains, you know, this is what y'all been waiting for. Thank y'all so much for, so much love for the first episode, you know what I'm saying? For showing so much love, I decided to bring out a second episode. Before I begin, I want to thank y'all for giving me to 100 subscribers. I finally made it, you guys, you know, it means the world to me. I appreciate every, all the love and support you guys have given to all my videos. Once again, thank y'all for helping me so much to reach this milestone. We're growing slowly, slowly but surely. I can tell you that for sure. Our next goal is to reach 125 subscribers. Can we do it, guys? Can you guys do it? And I know the squad is strong enough. Since y'all got the first episode to 26 likes, I want y'all to give this episode to 30 likes. So make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe if you uh, if you're new around this, and join the community community that we built on this channel. And hit that notification bell to be up to date with all my videos. Comment below any content you want to see me to do below, and I can I can see if I can make that happen. Tomorrow I'll be doing this a 100 sub celebration for each and every one of y'all that has supported me through this channel. So stay tuned for that. Now let's get back to the video. Like I said before this episode, I'm bringing a little bit of my creativity into the mix. My brain, of course, and that's you playing right like here. Bring y'all a story based on my creative mind as well as what has learned me to, to do the story as well as how long the creative process took me to write it and much more. The story is not based on true events though, mm -hmm. so don't think it's like real facts. It's just straight from, from here to here. Let's make this popular as the first episode. This story will be called Eagle Cove Cabin. In this story, it all started in, a, in the rural, rural country city of New Hampshire. Tamara and her friend Julie were getting ready for their trip to go to camp up north for the month. They had gathered some supplies they needed as well as some clothes and various accessible necessities they had to bring since our review only had one shower. After gather, gathering everything they needed and before hitting the road, Julie had decided to make breakfast for them both. Shortly after they ate, they headed out to the car and headed on the road. On the way there, they had to say goodbye to a few friends and family members before continuing on the road for the camp. After 
a five and a half hours and a half drive of driving, they had finally arrived. When they had gotten out of the car, Julie immediately looked spooked and said, This place looks haunted as heck. Oh my gosh. Tamara giggles and says, It looks like a bit rusty, a bit old and rusty, but nothing like cleaning up the place to make it brand new again. Julie, come on, line up a little bit. We'll be fine. We could consider this a second home to always come back to in case we need to get away from a normal, normal life back home. Enough yammering. We have to gather our beds and start heading in. It's getting close to sundown, and I'm for one. I am starving. I want to cook something for us to eat tonight. Come on, come, come and help me bring our luggage inside, Julie. Would you? Despite shivering and fear, Julie gathered her belongings from the trunk of the car and went inside with Chandra. Julie, look at this place. This place ain't too bad looking. However, this cabin needs some love and clean up. Look at that like a few kings of vice get started. Tamara takes out uh, some bleach, sponges, gloves, and some soap. Let's get this cleaned up, cleaned up, and then we eat dinner. Don't be scared. I'm going to be right here with you. We're in this together. Are you with me? She asks. Despite running, uh, fear running through her soul, Julie says, we got this. As you can see, the look on Julie's face, she wants to say no, but maintain her ground because she didn't want to ruin her best friend time in this cabin that Timmy really worked her brought off of, of getting some money gathered for her. An hour into cleaning, Julie hollered, Tamara, Tamara, come here, please. She tries not to cry. Tamara quickly runs into the room where Julie stood there, legs shaking in fear. Tamara says, Julie, what's wrong? I heard you hollering from all the way in the hallway from the back area. Julie says, I think I heard a noise from outside the window over there. Let me check it out, Tamara says. Don't don't go over there, Ju uh, Julie. It's fine. Nothing's going to happen. As she approaches the window and opens it, see nobody there. Just trees rustling against the window because of window blowing. There's nothing to worry about. Now come on, take a break. You look a little exhausted. Let's go to the kitchen and prepare some dinner. What do you say, Tamara asks. Sounds like a plan, Julie says nervously. Since, uh, so Julie and, uh, Julie and Tamara head to the kitchen, pull out some ingredients from the grocery bags. After pulling out the stuff in the bags, they began cooking. After 45 minutes of preparation and cooking, they finished cooking the meal. They, they had made some chicken and, with rice and vegetables and some chocolate chip cookies for dessert. We made some good food and no stress in the world to think about. Ain't that right, Julie, she asked. Yeah, I'm going to try to forget about what happened earlier and ease my mind. After having dinner and eating some of the cookies, Tamara and Julie decided to wipe, relax and watch some TV. Julie, what do you feel like watching on TV? A horror? She asked. Um, not horror. Trying not to be scared when especially it's going to be midnight in three hours. Maybe some common reaction, I suggest. Something less crazy, she says. Tamara giggles, come on, Julie. You can't be spooked about something that wasn't there earlier. Thoughts running through your head are trying to mess with you. I'll pop some popcorn and we'll get this relaxing night started. Do you want anything to drink from the kitchen while I'm in there, Julie? Uh, she asks. Um, another cola from the fridge and a bag of chips, she says. All right, I'll be there in five minutes. Five minutes pass by and Tamara finally comes back. Julie, I told you I'll be back with the snacks. Why do you look so terrified? She asks. Who? Me? Terrified? Nah, I'm fine, Tamara. Let's just enjoy the movie. I don't want to ruin this night because of my antics, but I just recommend we watch a comedy, comedy please. All right, Julie, you got it. And comedy it is. So the girl watches the movie, and a few hours later, they fell asleep on the couch. There was a uh, sound of sleep until there was a noise. Let's move. His partner nods and they are quickly, they move quickly and quietly. Shortly thereafter, they found the guy 
Hoping to reach for the hidden door button that was behind the paint on the wall. That button was going to initially almost explode where Tamara was hidden. But luckily the cops had just arrived in the nick of time before he could push it. Freeze, dirtbag. Don't you move a muscle. With a sinister look, a um, grin look in his face and his mask. He turned, turns around and pulls the gun on himself and shoots himself. Tamara could hear the gunshot from below. Which Tamara... Are you in here, the officer asked? Yes, I'm, I'm down here, she, uh, she she says, banging on the hidden door. Griffin, she's at the door. Push that button and I'll call the MCs to get this guy out of here. He's, he's severely wounded and he can barely move. My wife should have called the MCs for the wounded suspect lying on the floor. The other pushed the button, hidden button door on the wall and opens it. Mr. Summer, you are free to come out. He says, uh, getting a ladder from the bedroom. Is it safe? Where's the guy who broke in? She asks. He shot himself in the chest in this. Right now, my partner Griffin is calling the MCs to escort him out of, this, out of the premises. If he's lucky to survive, he will be arrested and sent away for a long time. He's the one we have been chasing for the last three years and we finally captured him. What was he, what was he running for? Uh, she asks. Countless numbers of kidnapping, assault, and robbery. Thank goodness you called, though, or it have been much worse. Where's my friend Julie? Uh, is she okay? She asked. Well, the friend is fine, miss. She's out there with our captain of the force, having information and details. I'm sure he wants to talk to you when we get down there. Oh, by the way, miss, I noticed you're holding a weapon. Is that manufacturing red shirt here? Or on your, or in your home cell? Yes, sir. The weapon is registered on my name. I don't have the papers with me as they are at home in my file cabinet. Alrighty, miss. I will escort you downstairs and take you to our captain if that's okay with you. Yes, that's totally fine with me. So while Tamara and the officer were heading out to the front, the other officer upstairs called the pandemics to get the last uh, bloody bastard. Um, but better breathing bastard, yeah. From the floor. Julie, Tamara, they both ran towards each other and hugged in relief. Thank goodness you're safe, Tamara. Where were you hiding at? She asked. There was a hidden door uh, upstairs that was very vis visible from any distance. I saw the button behind a painting on the wall in the room and I immediately pressed it and went hiding. Thank goodness I saw it before he was able to find me. I'm so glad. Uh, see, this officer, this officer, this is the one who made the number one call to you guys, she says. Good to know, Miss Julie. So, your name is Tamara, she says. Tamara is a mortar officer. Nice to meet you, Mr. Mora. Don't mind me asking, how long did you and Julie stay here in this cabin, he asks. We only been here for, stay here for a few days before this occurred. We were... Were there any uh, any related activities similar to the solution that just that you just encountered? Honestly, yes. Do you want to tell what happened? Yes. So after Julie and Tamara talked to the officer and the investigators, they packed their things and headed back to their home time safe and sound. Thankfully, they made it back safe. Mm -hmm. The end. That's the end of the story, you guys. Well, there you guys have it. There, there was the uh, story that I told you guys I was going to do for you guys. For my creative brain to hear presented to y'all. Now y'all have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. That will be the third episode of Criminal Arts Explained to Q&A. If y'all want a third episode, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to join the community we have built here. And hit that notification bell to have other videos. Once again, since this episode got 26 likes, I want this, video to, uh, this episode to get 30 likes. Thank y'all so much for 100 subs. There will be appreciation posts before or after this video. Also, the 100 sub celebration and what I'll be doing will pop off tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. And have the notification bell up on. Click the link in the description if someone wants to click the video that's popping up on the screen over here somewhere. Uh, on your screens. Once again, thank y'all so much for the support. We're on the road to 125 subscribers now. Make sure you follow all my social medias below and get a follow back. Links to them will be in the description below. Follow my Twitch for gaming and uh, stream content.
comment what you want me to play on the channel in the comments as well. Make sure to stay safe, wash your hands, and wear your mask at all times. Peace out. Until next time, this is your boy Queen Mark with another bang, you know what I'm saying? Uh, until next time, remember to stay game. Peace out.